This laptop was made by a company who fully embraces and supports right to repair and their product embodies that goal by being fully modular and completely user serviceable. This is a laptop made by a company that spends millions of dollars a year lobbying against right to repair and produces a product that has a 25% chance of failing within three years. Well, this HP Pavilion laptop is just over three years old and it has failed. But despite HP making it more difficult than it needs to be, I'm gonna fix it today. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and this is a neighbor's HP Pavilion 15, circa 2018. Quick specs on this. It's an 8th gen Intel Core i3-8130U dual core 4 thread CPU, 4 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and 16 gigs of Intel Optane memory to help boost the one terabyte hard drive, which as is usually the case, that spinning hard drive is our point of failure. Now, it was just a quick diagnostic that led me to this conclusion that the HHD is the reason that the laptop won't boot. I can post to the BIOS menu, and I can also boot from Windows installation media where I can detect the hard drive, but the installation fails to write to it. So today I'm gonna replace the broken hard drive with a new SSD, which in my opinion, any laptop in this mid-tier range produced after like 2016 should have come with in the first place, but anywhere they can cut costs, I guess. Anyway, let's open this thing up, which seems like it would be straightforward. Just four screws on the bottom here, but in reality, most of the screws are actually hiding under these rubber feet. Now, if you're careful, you can peel these off without using heat, but if you're impatient, you do run the risk of tearing them apart. I can see this one was already torn apart. Okay, with the feet removed, we can see all the screws. And I'll start with this middle one, which actually holds in the optical drive. So now we can slide that right out. Now let's get the rest of them out. And now we should be able to just lift off the back cover, but of course we can't because not only is it screwed together, but the completely plastic chassis is also clipped together. So to ensure we do as little destruction as possible, I'm gonna use the appropriate tools for the job because I see this has been opened or was attempted to be opened at least once because someone pried it open with probably a normal flathead screwdriver, but I have a plastic spudger or pry tool and some plastic spacers. I'll use the spudger to carefully pry open the clips and then use the spacers to keep them from clipping back together. Where to start? Probably on the front. Now that wasn't too bad. I don't think I broke any of the little clips, but I can see at least one of them is broken. And the problem with these cheap plastic chassis is that opening them up is going to lead to broken clips, which will ultimately make the chassis not fit together like it should, but the components used in the laptop are going to break down after the one year warranty expires, of course, so you're inevitably going to have to open it up or you're gonna pay someone to do it. In fact, I said someone has already worked on this laptop and I could tell from the pry marks, but also because under this tape here is the PC repair shop label, which I covered up because I'm not trying to call out a local business because in all honesty, it's not their fault. These clips almost seem like they're designed to break, but back to the task at hand and you can see there is, in fact, a spinning hard drive in here. 
And this thing that looks like an M.2 SSD is actually Intel Optane memory. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Optane memory, it's not exactly the same as DDR4 memory, which we have a one four gigabyte module of that here. Optane memory is closer to solid state memory and that it figures out what programs and tasks you use most often and then stores those programs or pieces of those programs so they can be loaded from the faster memory module rather than the much slower hard drive. Now, if configured properly, this does work, but to be honest, just replacing the hard drive with a much faster SSD really negates the need for Optane memory. And that's what we're gonna do today. I have this new Western Digital 240 gigabyte Easy Store SSD. Now, don't, I'm familiar with the Western Digital Easy Store external storage drives. This is the first time I've seen an internal drive in the Easy Store line. And honestly, looking at the 545 megabyte per second transfer speeds, there are better and cheaper options out there because this SSD costs $36, but I wanted to get this repair turned around quickly for my neighbor, so I just ran down the street to Best Buy, and this Best Buy exclusive was the cheapest 2.5 inch SSD they had available. Anyway, it's gonna be much faster and more reliable than the HHD we're pulling out of here. So there is a single bracket that holds in the HHD, so as I remove this, I'll explain that we are in fact stepping down from a one terabyte SSD to just 240 gigs, but considering the use case of the owner is essentially just Zoom calls and web browsing, he really doesn't need that much storage, so it wasn't necessary to go with a $100 or more SSD for this. Okay, now this hard drive should just slide straight back and out like that and then we can just slide the new one right in and now we can just replace this bracket okay the primary fix the new ssd is installed but because i have this open of course i'll do a little maintenance now the inside of this laptop is actually immaculate. There's no dust to blow out. However, I'm pretty sure that the heat sink is separate from the fan. So I should be able to just pop off this heat sink so I can repaste the CPU because the thermal paste that they typically use on these laptops is pretty cheap and it gets really hard and inefficient really quickly. So I'll just get this heat sink off and I'm gonna replace it with some really good cryonaut paste. So if you've never seen a laptop CPU before, laptop CPUs generally don't have an IHS or a heat spreader on top of them, and it's just a direct die. So this is the direct CPU die, and for direct CPU die pasting, I typically use Cryonaut, and for IHS, I typically use the Noctua thermal paste. And this is pretty good. You just need a nice thin coating to cover the entire die. and replace the heat sink. Okay, that's done. And I'll leave the Optane memory in, but my experience, it really doesn't make any really noticeable difference in performance when you have an SSD boot drive. Now, I think in this model, the M.2 connector is just a two PCIe lane connection. This is about a year shy of the by four lane Optane. I think, but either way, it's highly unlikely the HP firmware or BIOS would allow for use of an M.2 NVMe SSD in this connection. Time to reassemble, so just the opposite. I have to reclip and rescrew everything all back together. Now I'm gonna use my alcohol prep pad here. Try to remove that excess adhesive down in this little slot.
And I do have some mounting tape to reattach those rubber feet. So the system did boot into BIOS and the new SATA Easy Store 240 gigabyte hard drive is recognized. Now, unlike the previous laptop refurbs or repairs I've done, I can't clone the original hard drive because, well, it's dead. So I will be doing a fresh install of Windows 10 and installing all the drivers for the system. If you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up a new PC or the steps I went through to set up this laptop, you can check out this video here or in the description below. Finally, I'm also going to use a Winget script to remove all the bloatware from the system that comes with a Windows install. Again, I do have a full tutorial on Winget here and I'll be uploading this script with instructions for my Patreon members. After all is done, we have a winner and a loser. My neighbor is the winner because he has a perfectly functioning laptop that's better than new and will meet his particular needs for many more years, especially since the BIOS update I just installed does allow the laptop to meet Windows 11 requirements, so he'll have that upgrade option come 2025. And the loser is HP because they won't be making a sale of a new laptop to replace this one after just three years of use because this HP was fairly easy to service quite honestly whereas since just 2018 mainstream laptops have become much more difficult for users and even professional repair shops to service with the heavy use of adhesives, glue, soldered components, and the manufacturer's unwillingness to provide schematics and repair components. However, on the opposite side of the spectrum is a company like Framework and the Framework Laptop. Framework is committed to the right to repair and actually encourages users to work on their own equipment. I mean, a screwdriver is even included with the laptop. Now, I have no affiliation with Framework, they're not a sponsor, and I'm not even saying this laptop is for every consumer, because it's not, but this concept should be. Once you purchase a product, any product, it's yours. You own it and nobody, especially the company you purchased it from, should be able to tell you what you can and can't do with it or who can and can't repair it for you. And Framework also demonstrates that you don't need clips and adhesives or solder to build a solid, reliable laptop. So maybe companies like HP should stop spending millions of dollars a year fighting against consumer rights and maybe put that money into components that aren't gonna fail within three years and are easily serviced if they do. I mean, that's just my hot take. Let me know how you feel in the comments. While you're there, be sure to hit that like and maybe consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.